Hey, welcome to Core 52. Uh, I'm Jason. I'm the creative media pastor here at Aldersgate Church. With me this week is Toby McMillan. Toby is an owner here at Aldersgate, and she's also the co-owner of a company called Think Big Learning, yep. where she travels and does education. And so this week, she's going to educate us a little bit. We're talking about week 42 in Core 52 on radical change. If you've read through it already, great. If you haven't, I'm going to encourage you to do so. The core memory verse this week is Romans 12, 2, which starts out saying, do, no, do not be conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Toby, if you could like share with us a little bit about how you think Christians of the world may suddenly get conformed to this world um, and lose our focus on heaven and on Christ and things sure. like that. Yeah, I mean, I think as believers, we have this idea that we're going to fix our eyes on Jesus and, and our life's going to be all about that. But then I think we get distracted by things like social media and, you know, as a, as a female, you know, looking at here's what I'm supposed to look like. Even you guys are getting sucked into that these days. Like, here's what I'm supposed to look like. Here's, here's what my family's supposed to look like. Here's what my career should be. And, and just trying to be like those people that we see. And then it's October of 2020, you know, uh, the, the political landscape has kind of gone crazy. And I think, you know, believers are kind of getting, you know, drawn off sides, getting sucked into, you know, trying to hitch their wagon to a political party or a candidate and thinking that that's going to be meaningful in their lives. And I think it's kind of pulling our focus um, away from Jesus. I mean, I, I just think there's so many factors there in the world that, that pull our eyes off of him. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. I would say that social media is a big one. You know, that's, I think that is the new, um, just basic form of cultural conformity. Yeah. I grew up in a small town where it took, it literally took months from whatever the latest fashion styles in New York. <laughs> we lived in the center, so New York or LA, and it would all just kind of end up in West Texas a month or uh, two years later, and we're, we're finally hitting the fads. Now it happens so fast. I would say the same thing about politics. Like, you just never know what what candidate's going to say what and what's going to happen there and who's going to, like you said, hitch their wagon to that. But I know as a, as a now 40-year-old man that my political ideologies and, and what I think about politics and candidates, that has all shifted multiple times. Um, I would say that change happens in seasons, so to speak. Um, so we kind of go in and out of different change seasons. And let's say a season, let's just classify it as like a three-year period. Give me an idea of some season of change in your life, like a three-year period where you've seen the most change in your own personal life. Um, I mean, I'd like to think that in every season there's significant change. But I think for me, the most significant, I became a believer when I was about 18 years old. Um, and I was kind of a, a wild woman. Not, not all the wild things that sometimes teenagers do, but I was um, not very kind to people. Um, I have always had a mouth that runs a little bit faster than my brain. And so I would just, you know, say whatever. And, and I was the funny kid. And I was um, oftentimes unkind to the people around me and, um, you know, had a love for four letter words. And I, I mean, literally just all the stuff that came out of my mouth was pretty crazy. And I just was all about having a good time, sometimes at the expense of laughing at other people or whatever. Um, and so when, you know, God really got a hold of me and began to kind of transform me. His, his love for me was so great that I feel like it just caused me to really want to love people better mm -hmm. and recognize, because before that, I don't even think I realized that I was necessarily hurting people. Mm -hmm. Like I just was having a good time, you know, and had really unhealthy relationships. Um, and, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm supposed to love people. I'm supposed to care for these people in the same way that God loves them and cares about them. And so in a really short period of time, um, in a way that only the Holy Spirit can, I mean, he just literally transformed me. And I mean, he's still working on that area of my life today, many years later. But in that period of time, I just feel like he kind of took hold of my brain and my heart and my mouth and, and just um, really kind of started to really shape me to be more like his son and to interact with people on a different level and really kind of see them differently. So whatever I might have been tempted to make fun of or exploit or whatever before was something that I really recognized as like maybe a vulnerability in them that I needed to to care about and to, to really listen to people and hear their stories and love them well wherever they were. 
I would, I would agree with you again on that is that for me, a lot of times change happens for me when I recognize the things that I'm upset about or, or judging people for or frustrated about. Like those are the places that I can find grace for people because I see it in myself. Yeah. So when the Lord puts that mirror in front of me, if I'm looking at something and, and being frustrated, he puts a mirror in front of me and goes, hey, remember remember what I've done for you. And that, that switches it. So I think his love is a big catalyst. You know, the, the chapter talked about um, other places, like uh, I think a couple other different catalysts that cause us to want to make those shifts and those changes like what is what are those catalysts for you that have been moving you in those seasons from point a to point b through the through the season of change yeah i know in the chapter he talked about god's love Mm -hmm. as one and he talked about you know the people we surround ourselves with the community around us as two and then the holy spirit so obviously his love was a big one but also for me i just really hadn't been around christian community so having people and, and this has become even more true as I've gotten older, having people around me who really care about me as a person yeah. and are, are also looking to Jesus, who have also been transformed, and, and people who aren't afraid to call me out when I'm being the funny jerk, and they're like, hey, out of bounds, Toby, you know. Um, but not even so much that. I think that, you know, calling one another out is important, and there's times for that. Um, but I have a friend very early in my Christian life, she talked to me about um, living accountability. And basically what she meant by that is you live life alongside someone that's chasing so hard after Jesus, that's living this thing out so well that you go, man, I want to do that, you know? And I think that I have, you know, God has really blessed me with friends in my Christian journey that have challenged me um, to be more like him and have done this thing really well. And I'm thinking, man, you know, and even in the places where I see, you know, major weakness in me, I might see something in them that I go, wow, that's what it looks like, you know, because I think it's real easy to go, yeah, I want to be like Jesus. But what does that look like in the 20th century? And what does that look like? I mean, the 21st century. (laughs) What does that look like, um, you know, to be seeking after him in this cultural context? And I think sometimes you just see somebody um, who you're doing life with, who's doing this thing really well. And you go, yeah, you know, and you can have conversations with them and just people who are in the word and, you know, worshiping and doing all these things. And I, I think they kind of bring things to the table that, that help move you forward. I mean, obviously the other one, the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. um, you know, none of this happens without him, but I think the Holy Spirit inside of my community um, for the last, you know, 20 plus years has really had a huge impact on transforming me. That's good. That's good. I, I would say for me, I think the Christian community thing is a huge part. There's a section, this was in all of the essay uh, this week, in all of the essay, there was one short little sentence at the end of a paragraph that just, he was talking about Christian community and at the very end of it, he just said, we're better together. Yeah, We're better together. And I know that for myself um, and I would encourage that for, for all of us whether you're watching for the first time or whether you've been um, staying with us all year so far, we're better together. When we're in community, I think this whole pandemic has been a, is a huge mm-hmm. eye-opener that we are better together. There's a slogan on a, on a, on a commercial that's saying, um, be alone together. I'm not really sure how that, how that operates. I'd rather be um, <laughs> with people and be together together. But I know that we're better together. I know that as the church, that's how we were designed to be. And so we would encourage you to uh, engage with us, whether you leave a comment, whether you send us a, a direct message, or whether you email us through the website at aldersgate.online. We want to be a part of your journey, be a part of your community. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you when we see you.